How do filmmakers continue to educate themselves in order to have a long career in the world of filmmaking? I recently finished reading this book, The 100 Year Life. It talks about how as a species, we live longer now. On average, our life expectancy grows by two months more each year since some point in the 1800s. This idea of a longer life comes as both a blessing and a curse, as we won't be able to start working nearly as young as those that came before us, if at all, for a number of reasons. But put simply, you live longer, you need more money to finance that living. One huge takeaway from this book for me was the importance of continuing to train and keep educating yourself as life goes on. It got me thinking about our little corner of the working world and as filmmakers, no matter what area of the industry we happen to be specialising in, how we can continue to keep learning and ultimately stay relevant. <coughs> God. I think one huge advantage we have over so many day-to-day -day jobs is that the vast majority of people that are in this line of work enjoy what they do. We're all very lucky to have found a way of making an income that genuinely engages us and gets us excited. So educating ourselves on the topics feels less like work than it would do for a lot of other industries. For myself at least, it's something I want to do because I'm interested. I put this to friend and fellow filmmaker, director and sometimes cinematographer Daniel Broadley, asking him what he does to keep himself learning and developing. I think the main thing is, is not to get too complacent. I'd certainly try and make sure I'm challenging myself every time I'm doing a shoot. The biggest thing is to try and figure out your own ego and try and figure out how to combat that because you're going to get to a point where you get really good at something. Maybe you direct music videos really good or maybe you do branded content really well. And like, and the fear is that if you try something else, it might suck. Probably will. You, you haven't done it before. It's gonna, you know, you didn't start branded content being great, so you, and, um, and then is your ego gonna handle the fact that you've made, then made something that's not to that standard that everyone's praising all the time? But I think when you can get past that, failure obviously is, as we know, is the greatest teacher, and like you learn the most from it and grow the most from it. And if you allow yourself to fail in, in situations, then you're actually gonna kind of do this thing where you dip and then go really far up, you know? So you're gonna take all that information away you learn. And that falls back into the complacency thing. Like if you get complacent, you're not gonna challenge yourself and try things and fail. Don't be afraid to fail. That's where you'll find these opportunities to learn. And I find this observation about checking your own ego super interesting. It can affect so many areas of your career and lead you to miss out on opportunities. Speaking to director Neil Nunes, a film school graduate with over 25 years experience in the industry over the pond in Miami, his lack of ego over the years has allowed him to listen and learn from the pool of knowledge on set as he goes. For me, working on actual projects that I was directing was a big education all on its own. I never crewed for anybody. I didn't work on sets. So I was running a set that I had never been on. So learning protocol, le learning what all the crew positions were and all that stuff, all those things on sets where I had all these people, to me, that, that was an education just in, in gaining experience and learning about all sorts of things that were related to production. If you're playing the role of a head of department, that's where I feel ego and what you think is expected of you can step in, making you think it's not okay to admit that you don't know and asking questions of those that are occurring for you. But it bloody well is, isn't it, James Wicks? There's a bunch of ways I help to educate myself on an ongoing basis. Some obvious, some maybe not so. So I want to share them in case you might be missing a trick. Podcasts, magazine subscriptions, books. Industry expos can be a great place to learn, not only about new gear and tech, but from talks from industry-leading professionals. Film festivals too. Not only will you find yourself inspired from the films you're watching, but there are always talks, panels and Q&As with all types of professionals from across the industry. YouTube, like this channel for example. Are you subscribed yet? Have you hit that f bell? The other thing is work-life balance. Like you can't be influenced by just working all the time. Work isn't influence. Influence comes from everything else outside of work. And I think having a balance in life, I, I say that from a place of absolute privilege where I've figured out a way to have some of that time. I know for, that's not the same case for everyone. And, I think that to me inspires me is to have the space to go out and, and to just breathe for a second and figure out what my next step is rather than just tumbling through this constant work. Sometimes working is a, you're in this sort of little roundabout, you know, and it's like, it's, you can't get to the thing over here because you're just doing all this. But actually when you stop for a second, you can see a bit of a clearer way, you know, it's like, I, I don't know, that's very metaphorical and loose, but you get stuck in the cycle of working, you're, sort of, you're not really learning anything else, you're just, you're just moving too much. It comes from, like I said, reading books and watching films and going out and seeing the, the, the world do its thing. Basically keep learning, not only to get better, but simply to survive in a working world that we're going to be in for a long time to come. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Also, don't be afraid to take a pause, take a step back. 
retrain, do something else for a couple of years, your world's not going to end. If you do like reading or audiobooks, then I can't recommend The 100 Year Life enough. The things it's talking about are a little scary, but definitely eye-opening and worth bearing in mind. As a civilization, I feel like most of us don't like to deal with the future before we're anywhere near it, but we need to start to. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below to purchase the book if you're interested. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like below. It really helps. Check out this playlist for more videos with other filmmakers discussing things less talked about in the industry. And if you still haven't, make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.